So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, we'll be covering the popular topic of data analytics for MYOB Advance. Uh, as most of you will be familiar with, analytics or reporting is a fundamental need for all growing businesses and with platforms such as MyOB Advance that captures significant volumes of data, businesses need the right tools to bring forward the necessary insights or hard facts which this data contains to assist with their strategic planning. Uh, Focus, uh, which is the solution that we'll be presenting today is a pre-integrated tool with MyUp Advance uh, that can assist businesses with planning and, and a multitude of other things. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be going through that today. Uh, quick intros of um, the individuals running today's webinar. My name is James Rodder. Uh, I'm the general manager of Leverage uh, MYOB, sorry, the MYOB advanced team at Leverage Technologies. Uh, I've been an ERP uh, for about 15 years across multiple platforms and industries. Uh, we also have Craig from Focus, who will be presenting the what, how, and why today, uh, who I'll be handing it over to shortly. Craig's been in uh, the business for about 13 years, brings a breadth of experience across many systems and solutions and, and industries as well. Uh, Leverage and Focus have been working together for a number of years, providing solutions. Um, and over this time, we've had numerous success stories with our, our mutual customers, and we would like to extend that success to, to your good selves. Uh, just some housekeeping uh, before I hand it over to Craig. Uh, we're aiming for the webinar to be 30 minutes long with a uh, Q&A session um, at the end. And regards to the Q&A, uh, please put any questions in the Zoom Q&A panel. Uh, you might need to turn it on um, and then you'll be able to just type some questions and we'll um, answer them at the end. Uh, we'll be also uh, recording this webinar. Uh, we'll be emailing links shortly after the session concludes um, so you can watch it again or share it to your colleagues. Um, and that's it. So um, what I'll be doing is handing over to Craig now. He'll be taking you through um, the focus offering, the solution, and um, yeah, go, right. go for it, Craig. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that, James. And yeah, thank you to everybody for attending. Uh, today is a bit of a look at uh, how focus can benefit MYOB customers, MYOB advanced customers in particular we're talking about here. Uh, and how the data that you're already capturing can be uh, really harnessed to, to understand where you might uh, see some benefits either on the sales side, on the inventory side, and we even gonna to touch a little bit into, into some budgeting today as well. So um, that's what we're really going to, to be covering in this, uh, in this short uh, presentation. For those of us who haven't heard uh, or those of you who haven't heard about Focus, uh, this is a bit of an elevator pitch on us. So we're, a, we're about using data to, to derive solutions that really help benefit your business. Uh, we're an easy to use platform. You'll see how easy it is to drill through and really you'll see a very quick ROI out of something like Focus because of it really helps you unlock the data that you've already got. What we actually do, though, is we help you make sense of data. You know, data is so important in business and understanding uh, where you're going, where you've been and what, what those drivers actually are. And what we're about at Focus is, is taking that, that data that can be quite messy and disparate and helping you sort and arrange that data, present it, but most importantly, explain the story that the data is trying to, to tell you, being able to pull all those pieces together because they don't always come from one source. They, you've got many parts to your business and together they, they tell a collective story. And that's really what Focus is able to help you with. Who benefits from Focus? Well, pretty much anybody in the business. It doesn't have to just be people in the office uh, that benefit from Focus it, or the, the C-suite in a business. It might actually be people working in the warehouse or it could be people in uh, field services or indeed 
actually the, the management team, it doesn't really matter who, we able to bring data in and govern that data to make it relevant to the, to the appropriate person to make sure that they've got the data they need to, um, to do their job. How we do that is through our focus solution. So today we're gonna to concentrate on the, on the first two components that you can see here. Uh, there is a third component that is uh, a bit more for the technical uh, minded people in, in your business, the ability to bring data together and, um, and build it into a solution, but we won't have time today to go into that. Where we are gonna spend our time, however, is in the visualization and the analysis part. And the combination of these two really are, they're a very strong partnership in giving people the visual data that if they're more visual people, they might like to see charts and dials and have a screen in the office that, that shows them all the KPIs. But then there's people that are more analytical or need that, that more detail they can drill through and uh, you'll see that as we jump into the uh, into the demo. Our target customers, what we're talking about here in our data analytics is most of our customers fall into, into some of these categories. Not all of our customers, we do have customers in not-for-profit and uh, in services, uh, but uh, what we're showing you here is probably a, a makes up the bulk of our customers. So people that are in distribution, manufacturing, retail, and uh, servicing customers through uh, either uh, providing product or providing service, where they've got lots of customers, lots of products, lots of transactions floating around in the business, and sometimes making sense of all that data in a, in a timely way can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, we, as a business uh, globally, we service uh, about two and a half thousand customers. In Australia, it uh, floats around the 700 customer mark. Here are some uh, MYOB advanced customers that you, uh, that you may know uh, or names that you, you might be aware of. Some of these customers have been using Focus for, for many, many years. And uh, we'll, if you do know them, feel free to, to speak to them. They should speak uh, very highly of us because what, we, uh, what we're gonna show you today is how they're actually using it. So let's, uh, let's jump in and, uh, and show you what the, what the solution actually does. So like you saw in the slides, the, the product is a cloud-based application meaning just like advanced, you don't need to have any special software on your computer. You don't need to do anything special like that. You can simply log into um, on any internet enabled device and access your, your data. Uh, what we're showing you here is just a bit of a, a generic uh, demo set. We do have out of the box solutions for MIB advanced, but they can also be customized as well. So if you've got custom fields or data, that uh, may not fit into the standard, that's completely fine. We're able to tailor this to, to your business. Uh, and on what I've got on this dashboard is kind of a bit of a, a highlight reel of some of the things that a lot of our customers like to look at. First and foremost, it's, uh, it's usually sales. Sales is one of the first things that people start with when uh, they start using Focus because of the very fast ROI they experience uh, using uh, focus for sales uh, analytics. So I've got here a, a sales trend. I'm looking at what my budget is compared to actuals, what my sales variance this year versus last year. I'm also doing some KPI uh, measurements around growing customers or declining customers. So if we need to monitor these to make sure that we're not losing too many customers and we've got customers actually growing, that's usually a good sign that things are going up pretty well in the business. Now, I'm logged in as a user seeing everything in this business, but if you have a sales team in your organization and you want to share something similar to this, you can, but you can govern it. So when uh, a sales rep logs in, maybe they only see their sales variance and their variance to budget and what their trend is and their declining customers. 
You can also see it doesn't have to just be about sales. I've also got things like stock on hand and weeks cover and back orders and even stock out risks based on some, uh, some calculations or rules. We're able to determine not just what you're selling, but how much you're holding, how much coverage you have, things like that. Now, like we showed in the slides, it's great to have a visual view, but this doesn't serve uh, every purpose uh, in a business. This might tell us something is interesting, but we need to drill through to ask that next question. And that's where these little analyze arrows uh, on every widget allow us to do. So if I click on one of these, what you'll see is it drills through into the actual analysis. We call this the analysis grid. This is where we can come and ask more questions of our data, not just what was on the dashboard. What you can see here is this year and last year and what the variances have been uh, month on month. I can change how much data I'm looking at. So if I'm just interested in the, in the last three months or, <coughs> excuse me, even just what happened last month, we can chop and change it, including selecting any bespoke period. So if we like to even look down to, to days or weeks or whatever the case may be, you can uh, set this up as you see fit. Even if you're using fiscal calendars, uh, they can also be introduced into the platform. And everything I'm showing you here doesn't have to be done in a particular order. You can follow your train of thought through, <coughs> excuse me, through, um, through the data. And some of those basic questions like, well, who are my customers and how much do they spend? is a click away. So I can see all my customers and their, their spending habits uh, with me by uh, over the last 12 months, or I could roll that up into my salespeople. I've got a, quite a few salespeople in this business. I can see how they all contribute to that number. And maybe at this point, I'd actually like to see a comparison. So I wanna see, well, I wanna see growth by sales rep. And I can sort this and say, well, these are my, my reps that are growing really well. And maybe these are the reps that aren't doing so well. So I can start to see reps that maybe are struggling a little bit. So maybe I wanna concentrate on some of these. I'm curious why these seven reps are in decline. What product groups are they struggling to sell? So we can move through the data and follow our own train of thought as we're going. So I can now see, uh, that probably the biggest problem exists in lights and lamps for these reps. And this is sales to, to last year. So we kind of hope that some of these products will, will be stronger than this. So we can start to drill in and say, well, these product groups really concern me for these reps. Who are the customers that they should be worried about? And we can start to get a really nice view of what's going on with within our customer base, with our reps and with our product sales, really just in a few clicks. So we don't need to get reports written. We don't have to know which GI we need to run to, to do all of this. This is a read-only platform. People can't break it. You can simply come in and ask the questions as you see fit. If you want to, you can also export the data. It's, a, it's only a click away. This is also security controlled. So if you don't want people exporting, they can't the ability to save the anything you see and share it with other people is in here, but also the ability to create alerts. So if you wanted to be alerted or have others alerted to a particular condition, maybe a margin alert or a customers who stopped buying alerts, you can get the platform to do some of that heavy lifting for you. So you're not um, having to run the same reports every time or rely on sales staff to, to really be um, proactive in looking for these things. So you can really get it to do some of that, um, some of that heavy lifting for you. And just to demonstrate that it is quite easy to use out on the road, we also have the ability to create scorecards. So I selected a particular customer that was of concern and this is customizable, mind you, but even if you just wanted to get a high level view, of how this customer is going against everybody else, what their sales trend might actually look like, do they owe you any money, what their variances are, what do they buy compared to everybody else, whatever you would want 
to, to give somebody out in the field as information to understand what kind of conversation they should have. Should they be talking about selling new products? Are they not buying certain ranges? Have they purchased products that required service and they haven't taken that service yet? Whatever the case may be, you can inform your, your users really quickly on what are the key things they should concentrate on so they're not just having to rely on gut feel every time. Might come back to the, uh, to the dashboard here because while that's uh, giving you a very quick view of, of sales, in your business, if controlling your, your stock on hand and where your stock is or how many back orders you have is, is of interest, you can still use the focus platform for these. So I've got some back orders in here. If I wanted to know more about them, I can simply click on it to drill through to understand, well, what are the back orders by product? But maybe before I do that, I'm actually interested in it by, um, by supplier. And I'm just going to switch into my total mode. So that's the back orders. Do we have any forward orders? And maybe what's the stock on hand at this current moment for those suppliers? So we can really start to drill in and ask questions about what's going on. Maybe it's not even about the, um, about the supply yet. Maybe it's about the product group, especially if we, we buy a lot of products from, uh, from different uh, or similar products from different suppliers we can say concentrate on illumination products and now see where maybe we don't have back orders or we have very high back orders, even showing those that have quite low uh, stock on hand and what their back and forward orders might actually be. So once again, really fast, really easy way to get answers to questions that might enable you to make sure that you're not stocking out of product and you're able to, to remain that preferred supplier to your particular customers. So what we've looked at so far is a quick view on our sales and inventory. Something uh, we've also got the ability to do in Focus, uh, we have a, a budgeting module that can be enabled. And budgeting is what we've noticed in a lot of customers is budgeting is a very uh, external Excel driven uh, function of a business that has a lot of headaches. It's a really big time suck for a lot of businesses. Uh, it takes the sales team away from um, doing their, their primary job or they're not involved in the process at all. And they're just given targets that they've got no input to and they've got no real buy-in to either. So we've built this budgeting tool that actually can sit on top of uh, any, uh, any focus uh, solution that we might build for you, so even custom ones. But what I've got here is a, a sales rep budget. So I've got all the sales reps like we were just looking at. And we could be actually asking our salespeople to contribute. So tell us their budget numbers. So I've got those same product groups. You don't have to do it at a product group level. You might go even lower again. Than, uh, than this, but you just for example purposes, you can see I've selected Shelly. At the moment, I'm in control of all of these lines, but I can actually select these and assign those over to the particular individual, either Shelly or Shelly's manager to, uh, to input those budget numbers. So it no longer is just uh, a function of one person and we don't have those issues around version control, we're able to maintain one version. But if we were Shelly and this was assigned to us and we're looking at our illumination products, we can actually come in and budget, maybe not the dollars because salespeople might not think in dollars. Maybe we actually wanna budget in units. How many are they planning to sell of that particular product? So we can actually, set out some, some budget numbers in units. Uh, and we don't have to allow them to, to change this, but maybe to hit the numbers we want to hit, we can't sell more, but we can adjust the unit price for those particular items. So we can make adjustments here. So if we wanted to, to sell a thousand here, we can see what that does to the revenue number for Shelly. We can see the margin sitting at, at 25. But if we were able to get 
$370 per unit, we can see what that will also do to the margin. So we've got a fixed cost. We know what the cost is, but we're now able to, to do this. And we can copy these forward. So we might expect to have that cost or that sale price uh, for the next three months. And we can make those adjustments and maybe it drops down to, to 250 here. So we can see what that might actually do to, to my margins. It falls through the floor. So we can really see uh, what impacts very quickly and very directly we might be actually having on, uh, on those margin numbers and giving people that, uh, that accountability and input into, uh, into this process. Once a budget has been built and we've got all those people contributing to it and we've got all the numbers flowing through it, this can also be published back. So it's not just stuck in a, in a spreadsheet or even in our budgeting tool, but if I scroll back up, it can actually be feeding back into where your, uh, where your team is measuring themselves against an actual budget. So no longer is it uh, something that needs to be uh, built and then only a few people look at, you can actually make sure that everyone's looking at it every single day when they log in to make sure that they know how they're tracking against their budget. So we can see uh, Shelly who we're just clicking on is only 1% above budget. And we can see if there were any gaps at that product group level, we could see that she's pretty comfortable across the board, but not uh, if this was a conservative budget, we're only 1% up on that particular budget. So you're able to build these budgets, either conservative or stretch or whatever the case may be, and track your actuals against those budgets, empower the people that are using them to uh, really get the best out of the data that you've already got. Just conscious of, uh, of time, but we might check if there's, uh, there's any questions that have come through, James. Uh, yes, uh, a question did come through and um, Scott answered it on the uh, Q&A panel. It was regarding pricing. Uh, obviously, when it comes to solutions, it's the cost of software and the services that get across the line. So the pricing can vary significantly, uh, but you'll see on the panel it's been answered to, to give some ballpark on what's what sort of investments involved. No worries. All right. So like... Obviously, the, uh, the Q&A panel is um, open. If you do have any questions to ask uh, Craig around the Focus Solution or myself, um, please fire them through. Um, I guess while you're um, thinking of any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll pose some to Craig. Um, so, you know, with NYB Advance, uh, especially if uh, a customer's recently gone live, um, not, mm -hmm. they're accumulating data on NYB Advance, but they, they may have their legacy system that contains, you know, a wealth of, of data as well, um, can can focus connect to legacy systems or um, non operational systems to do comparison reporting? Or yeah, we can absolutely we can. So you know, just for uh, context globally, we're working with about two hundred and fifty different ERP systems. So we've got a lot of integrations for some of those legacy systems, even if it's something bespoke, you know, you're, you're coming off something that was internally built and you've moved to, to advanced. If that system is still accessible and uh, accessible could be there's an Excel spreadsheet of data that you want to bring in. We can bring that data into focus. We can also through that uh, designer tool that I briefly spoke about in the slides that has the ability to even transform data. So if you had to change the codes to fit into MYB Advance, we can also change that history. So the same customers and the same products and same sales reps line up. When using Focus, you'll when you're looking at say a couple of years of history, at some point when it crosses over from to your legacy system, the users are actually unaware that they're actually looking at the combination of two systems. It's completely seamless. So you won't lose your history. You can maintain that very valuable data uh, inside Focus. And in some cases, it might mean that you don't need to maintain that legacy license or something like that to uh, just for the purposes of getting access to your data. 
you can just pop it in focus and um, and do away with that legacy system. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I guess a, a, a recent topic um, with, I guess, Optus and, and alike, like, <laughs> um, you know, data security. Um, obviously, yeah. this data has been um, hosted by focus yes. um, and just understanding, um, I guess, the security measures that uh, focus has around. Yeah, customer absolutely. Data. You know, we, we take it very, very seriously, uh, data security. So all Australian customers are hosted within Australia. We host through uh, Amazon Web Services or AWS for short. Uh, so we've got uh, 24 hour monitoring through through them. We also have our own uh, platform team within the focus business that are also monitoring it around the clock. Uh, we're a global business, so we're able to do that. Uh, we've got quite a long list of uh, security credentials. We've got SOC compliance and ISOs and all the numbers you can uh, you can imagine. But uh, we take it very, very seriously uh, as a business. Uh, we throw a lot of resource at it to make sure that people's data is secure uh, to, and hosting it all in Australia and not uh, having it overseas is uh, you know, very important to us as well. So we're able to meet those both defense and medical um, suppliers that have those um, you know, government requirements of where data needs to be stored we're able to meet all of those requirements. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Um, st we still don't have any more questions from the attendees. Um, I'll fire one more question and then we'll see, um, and then we'll wrap things up. Um, so obviously with MIB Advanced and the ERP system, financial sales, purchasing data, yeah. is there any other types of uh, systems or data sets that Focus can analyze e-commerce solutions, operational mm. systems, just a spreadsheet sitting on the side. Yeah. You know, can they, can that also be uh, digested by, uh, by focus? Yes, it can. And, uh, and quite commonly as well. So kind of similar to the multiple uh, source question, uh, the beauty with, I guess, the, uh, you know, the data that's in MYB, a lot of the linking and everything already exists. So a, a very common um, solution sits around that kind of finance piece. So being able to look, produce multiple uh, financial statements and being able to share those, having that same level of governance, because there might be people who need access to it that may not be MYB users like auditors or something like that. So you have that ability to share data externally if you want to in a very uh, secure and governed way. Uh, a common one is CRM data. So if you're using something like a, a Salesforce or a HubSpot or something like that to, uh, to measure your sales or manage your sales team, that data can also be uh, introduced into focus. So it doesn't have to just be ERP data. Brilliant. I think that might be a question that came through as well. Uh uh, as a question regarding the recording, yes, uh, this session is being recorded um, and we'll upload it onto YouTube and send everyone links, um, hopefully within the next 24 hours or so. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, we're running out, we've run out of time. So, Craig, thanks for taking us through Focus. Um, for those who attended and who are watching it later, please, um, if you've got any questions, if there are specific requirements that you would like to discuss with Craig or the Focus team, contact them on the email address or phone. Otherwise, um, contact um, the leverage team through our help desk and we'll, we'll pass on the necessary information. So thanks for everyone for uh, jumping on today's webinar. Um, I hopefully, you, hopefully you found it enlightening. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everyone.